The two women who want to oversee elections in Colorado have both called out conspiracy theorists and election deniers. And their nine news debate today, Democratic Secretary of State Jenna Griswold called out her Republican opponent Pam Anderson for campaigning with the Republican Lieutenant Governor candidate Danny Moore, who's an election denier himself. And Anderson criticized Griswold for being too partisan in the office and for, and for hypocrisy and opposing dark money in politics while spending that untraceable cash through the National Secretary of State organization that Griswold leads. Shining a light on dark money and, and being leading a partisan organization that has raised millions of dollars and funneled two dark money groups all across the country is not living up to what you say your principle is. I do think it can be confusing to voters and to me uh, that while Pam isn't an election denier, she campaigns and says she supports election deniers. I think that can be confusing. Politics reporter Marshall Zellinger gets into some of the other claims made in today's debate. An interview from the newspaper The Guardian begins our snap truth test of the debate between Democratic Secretary of State Jenna Griswold and Republican challenger Pam Anderson. It drives your partisan rhetoric, things like when you told The Guardian, I believe that if you vote Republican on the outcome of an election, that United States Americans would lose their right to vote within three months. I never said what she just uh, tried to put words in my mouth. And if you go back and pull the quote, it said um, many Americans could lose the right to vote and our fundamental freedoms are at risk in several months. Here is that article, which we reported on at the end of August. The flashy headline, the U.S. could lose the right to vote. Griswold's claim extreme Republicans would strip Americans of the right to vote. No, the country is not losing its right to vote, but voting restrictions are happening. The Brennan Center for Justice tracks new restrictive voting laws across the country, policies like adding ID requirements or limiting mail ballot options. They count 20 states with restrictive voting laws in effect for November's election. Restrictive does not mean losing the right to vote. The Brennan Center also counts 11 states that expanded voting laws this year, including four states with Republican secretaries of state. Another disagreement during our debate was over a 2019 state bill that added voting options in Colorado. I worked with our legislature to lead a law that increased drop boxes. It guaranteed access on public universities and tribal lands. Uh, it increased in-person voting. Uh, and in 2019, you testified against the bill and, and you tried to kill it. My opponent dropped a bill that that no election official in the state had seen that cost millions and millions of dollars and could not be implemented. 61 of the county clerks across the state opposed the bill, and it was my job to go to the table. Three years ago, Anderson was the head of the County Clerks Association, and she did testify against the bill during its first committee hearing in the House, and then interviewed with me a week later. The issue is, does this solution fit the problem? She told me her concern was the cost of new in-person voting centers instead of technology to speed up the check-in process. Did she try to kill it? No, because by the time the bill got to the Senate and amended with county clerk input, her position went from opposed, meaning against the bill, to neutral. Marshall Zellinger, 9 News. Our unprecedented series of six televised debates wraps up Friday night. Democratic Senator Michael Bennett and Republican challenger Joe O'Day will debate here on 9 News, commercial free hour at 7 p.m.